All right, so we are back for the next round of uh, lab configuration goodness. I have duplicated my uh, CSR 1000 Vs and created 20 of those. Um, and I'm just going to activate SSH and give them their proper host name uh, once I feel like doing that. <clears throat> but since I'm in the video making mood, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up the iOS XRV9000 and I'm gonna see if I can do that from memory as well um, so we're gonna create a new virtual machine and we'll call this XR1 um, and we're I think is the XX 5.5 if not you guys are gonna to get to see me be totally wrong and blow it up oh yeah um, so it's also gonna be Linux other Linux 2.664 bit um, hit next on that I've actually created a, an additional data store because the hard disks on these are pretty big they're 45 gigs each and I plan to spin up four of them so I don't want them taking up the rest of my space on my solid state um, so I'm just going to relegate them to a standard uh, spindle hard disk for right now until uh, we end up expanding the lab with other cool toys So the cool thing about doing things as VMs is that uh, you can just transfer this stuff whenever. I've tested this and got it to run on 8 gigs. And the VMware, not the VMware, the Cisco documentation, if you dig into it, uh, you will find that they actually state that it will run at 8 gigs uh, for lower scale workloads. But for full route scales, they recommend 16 gigs. Um, but this will work um, so and I will go ahead and revert reserve all guest memory for this um, we also are going to do four CPUs on one socket um, that should handle that part um, I don't believe I need to add the exposed hardware assisted virtualization if I do I can always add it later but I'm pretty sure this is it for that part the hard disk 45 gigs um, we're gonna go ahead and do thick provisioned it's gonna be on data store 2 uh, if I am correct it's gonna be IDE controller master instead of a SCSI controller um, I'll leave that at dependent for right now um, the LSI logic parallel should be fine um, and we're gonna add a uh, bunch of network adapters on this one too. Um, and I don't remember how many uh, it can handle. Let's see. So, go to the official configuration guide. Um, blah, 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 blah. None of this is what we want. ESX environments. And we should do the one. There should be one that says. Uh, Installation requirements. Nope, that didn't give us what we wanted. Um, there's a table in the documentation that says how many interfaces we can have. Um, so we know that the first three need to be E1000s and the rest can be the newer interface type well we'll just roll with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, we'll set these so the first three need to be 1000 so one two three and then the rest of these can be 
vmxnet three for the data interfaces. And if it doesn't use them, it doesn't use them. No biggie. And we'll leave these on lab network until we determine which one of these is our management because it will have a, an actual dedicated management interface and it should be network adapter one, but we'll just make sure before we put it on the VM network so we can reduce the amount of redundant configuration because uh, that can be changed while the VM's running. So not a big deal. Um, use a data store out of so file and we will go to our images, appliances, XR9K, and the, it's important you have the VGA file. Now, if you have access to the 9K images, you should know which ones you need, uh, but you will be, we are gonna be using the full 9K uh, with the VGA support. Um, so we can have the virtual console um, for our initial configuration. And that will be that. We'll hit next. Uh, take a look at it real quick. Sound effects are optional. And uh, let's fire it up, see if it crashes and burns, or see if it works. Hmm. So it's creating a VM. Um, and we'll wait for that to complete and then uh, we'll fire it up and see if we can get it to run right. Oh, and by the way, if you're all wanting to know how much resources are, are being used, uh, this is it. I have 20 CSR 1000 Vs currently running um, and I'm only using 32% of my CPU and 19% uh, of my memory and I have 96 gigs of RAM on this appliance. Uh, or on this physical host, uh, and I'm only using 18.29. So um, this shows that uh, ESX can run these routers, the CSR1000Vs, quite efficiently. And if you have just a, a, a decent desktop or something lying around that has uh, the support you need for virtualization uh, processor-wise, you can probably turn it into... Uh, a hypervisor using the free version of ESX and you'll be okay um, oh that looks like I had a router that was still importing uh, router 20 but it's it's gonna be turning on now yeah. but anyway um, and and the processors on these they're they're server great but they're not high clock speed these are 2.4 gigahertz processors um, quad cores and there's two of them and because I'm mainly using it for stuff like this where I don't need a ton of compute power, um, I didn't go for the higher clock speeds just so I can cut down on energy consumption a little bit more. Um, but these boxes and these servers uh, or, or this generation of processors available uh, with like 2.93 gigahertz or a little over three gigahertz uh, clock speeds. So you can, you can get you know, some pretty powerful machines for not a whole lot of money. Um, so the, the, the appliance that's going to use most of my processing is the iOS 6R. Uh, these are pretty processor hungry. Um, you know what, let's just make this go away because we don't need all of the features that are available while in evaluation mode. Because this is basically inter uh, evaluating the enterprise version. I'll just go ahead and set up the free version and install that license on it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, toss on this um, basic license. This is the free license that everyone can get because we don't need the we don't need the uh, enterprise features for the way we're setting it up. Now, if you were trying to build a VMware lab. Uh, you will need to leave it in trial mode. Um, what I'm going to do, once I get to that point, I'm going to just do nested virtualization in this box and, uh, and do it that way. Um, so my nested VMs will be in trial mode. And I'll be able to experiment with vCenter and all the other good stuff that way. Um, 
But as for my main host, I'm just going to leave it under the free uh, single host hypervisor license. And I'm going to be good to go. Why are there two R20s? This isn't right. Let's shut this one down and delete it. Alright, so it looks like uh, this one's ready to go. So we'll start it up. And this is R20. We'll get rid of this for right now. And let's watch it boot. So exciting. So with any luck, this will boot properly and uh, we'll be able to take it for a test drive and if it works, We'll just spin up uh, three more of these and we will have our four iOS XRVs. All right, so one thing I want to point out is that uh, even though it says press return to get started, when you click on it and hit enter, it usually takes uh, a minute or two because it's actually still got some things going on behind the scenes. Um, so if you get a few moments, you'll see a couple of more uh, console messages appear. And uh, once all of that has been completed, it'll respond just fine and you'll be able to start uh, configuring it, doing whatever you want, um, and it'll work with no problems, so no worries. We're just going to give a few moments. Yeah, see, there you go. You want to see the uh, whole cryptographic statement from Cisco and, you know, hey, U.S. laws, blah, 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 blah. And it's usually got a few more things to say, so we'll just give it a moment. All right, so now we are ready to set it up in a root system username. And we're in, ready to go. We can do configure, bam. Oh yeah, so for and it, creating a crypto key on iOS XR, for those of you who want to immediately get your SSH going, you have to do it under the privilege exec mode, if you even call it that on XR. Uh, anyway, you don't do it on a configure, ter configuration terminal. You, you do it under uh, the, uh, the base mode, which we're used to calling it privilege exec. So if we do... Uh, so key generate 
We actually then do DSA instead of RSA. Um, and so you can go 1024, we'll just run with that. Boom, it's already done. Uh, do we even SSH? Yeah, you're gonna do SSH server on here. Uh, we're gonna do V2 only. Um, we'll do that too, just for giggles. And uh, let's see. Interface management zero. IP address. Uh, oh, IPv4 address. Zero that. Oh, what are we? What are we doing with these? We're gonna do two of one. Can we do a slash notation? Yeah, you can. Yes. Awesome. Um, no shit. And then um, root commit. Exit. Show interface. And we want to make sure. So what we're going to do is check the MAC address on this one, E604, and we're going to just verify. See, look, the treachery here. Which one is it? Or is it just? Yeah. See, look, there's. It's on adapter six, even though this is the first interface. Oops, what am I doing? Um, like I said, be aware of the treachery of how some of these interfaces get assigned. I'm pretty sure there's some logic out there for it. I just haven't bothered to investigate it. Um, but in any case, that's what I found to be most reliable. So we're seeing five interfaces and a management interface. So six interfaces. Now why on earth is this one? I have no idea. Um, well, we're gonna go with it. So let's do this again. MAC address zero 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 C two. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. So it should be adapter six. So what we'll do is just go in our settings. Yep. And double verify it here. Before we change the network on it. And then we'll just switch it over to VM network. And uh, that'll be that. Double check it. Yep, oh, it's up. All right, so uh, let's see if we can ping it. Oh, uh, wait, well, wait. Um, there's no routing for it. So we'll actually need to be on one of the devices in the network already. This one should be. So let's just do ping 10.0. Uh, dot. One. Oh wait, we gotta ping it out of the management VRF on this device. Silly me. Ping VRF management. Turn up and I Boom, success. So it is now communicating over the management network. Uh, if you want to be able to reach this on a subnet outside of this network, you'll just either, you'll need to set up a, a default route for it to go out. Um, I would also recommend putting that management interface into its own VRF. Uh, but that is how you set up an iOS XR V9K. Uh, as you can see, it's not really a whole lot of difficulty once you know how to set it up. Um, 
Otherwise, you will spend a decent amount of time digging through the Cisco documentation to figure out which obscure setting you forgot because it'll never completely boot. Um, but that's all. So thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.